Welcome to the best of British motorsport this week from Alton Park in Cheshire. A real variety in store today. We've got saloon car racing and the Porsches. Each race, 10 laps of the 2.7 mile circuit. Round eight of the production Porsche series is among the races featured today. Hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of the German supercars will line up. Watch out to see if the front engine 968 models can get the better of the classic 911s. We'll also catch up with the Volkswagen Ventos. Mark Lemmer from Surrey starts as favourite for yet another victory, but Dave Pinkney, who lies second in the table, heads the chasing pack. Also running in the same race, the slightly lesser powered Polos. We start today though with the Rover GTIs. The cars have always thrilled the spectators with their close competitive racing. And here at Alton for round eight, the action is sure to be just as close. Series leader is Russell Grady from Leicestershire, but Barcher's Mark Humphrey will be out to close the gap. So let's join our usual race commentary team of Neville Hay and David Addison. Well, thanks, Jeff. And since the cars have lined up on the grid here at Alton Park, it started to rain, the circuit is damp, the spectators scurrying for their umbrellas, but it's still very hot indeed. Got to say hello to Mum, haven't I? And it's very hot. Extremely hot. All the fans are on. Trying to keep cool. That's Pearlman, Lawrence Plummer's view of events, alongside him on the front row, number 93, Yorkshireman Spencer Baker, assisted here by Dunlop Rover turbo racer Martin Short. So Plummer and Baker on the front row with Carl Blakely third, Troy Dunlop fourth and Russell Grady fifth. Jonathan Williams next up from Mark Humphrey, Nigel Rubin, Mark Jones and Phil Paget and the time still pretty close. But what will the changed weather conditions mean? It means the circuit is very slippery. We'll find out in a moment who makes the best of the start. It's a 10 lap race here at Alton Park on the nearly three mile full international circuit. It's go! A good getaway there by Lawrence Plummer, not too much wheel spin. This very full field sets off down towards Old Hall Corner. Lawrence Plummer on the inside, the red and white car of Spencer Baker on the outside line. The yellow car of Carl Blakely is third, and we're on board with Leicester driver Russell Grady, tucked right up behind Troy Dunlop, number 11, heading to Cascades for the first time, and it's slippery. Russell Grady, good view of the back of Dunlop's car, on go his brake lights, looks to see this away. He's a slightly tighter line there, but decides that it's probably discretion the better part of that as he comes out of it. Jonathan Williams well up too. Out of Cascades, now down to Nickerbrook. Here come the leaders, number 30, Lawrence Plummer. It's Spencer Baker second, the yellow car of Carl Blakely third. Then it's Troy Dunlop, and then this man, Russell Grady, in fifth. Coming through Nickerbrook, right, then left, then right again. Out of the chicane, onto the old circuit, and all over the curves there goes Grady. Yeah, you can see the understeer on the car there as the front wheels were scrabbling for grip. But still a very tight battle up the front as they come through now. Druids accelerate along that short piece of straight that takes them up towards Lodge Corner. And we've got a spinner and damage to the front of number 24 there and that's Nigel Rubin and I don't think he's going to take any further part in the proceedings. Yeah, but a lot of damage there to the front of Nigel Rubin's car. We're on board with Russell Grady losing a place. That's Jonathan Williams charging through on the inside. Up into fifth place goes Williams. A very good bit of driving that. It was late on the brakes but it was clean, tidy, no contact at all and Lawrence Plummer continues to lead. Significant gap that has got to be made up by Jonathan Williams after that manoeuvre which has taken him up to fifth place but he's trying hard and Grady can do nothing about it. We made a brilliant start. It's up to four at the top. Nigel Rubin telling the team what happened. They look too impressed. And with that amount of damage to treat, I would think they wouldn't be either. And out come the leaders, fanning out there as they come down towards Nickerbrook. Still Lawrence Plummer in the lead, but everybody having a good look. But this is a very treacherous circuit, David when it's wet like this, and I think that they're going to have quite their work cut out. Carl Blakely looking very keen there, but they've all fallen out, closed up together, and you can see fifth and sixth closing as well. Absolutely. In the lead is Lawrence Plummer, but Spencer Baker giving him a really tough time of it now. Into Druids, Carl Blakely third in the yellow car, regularly driven by Richard Austin. Blakely's normal car still being repaired after drums at Cadwell Park. Vince Martin, the last of this great big gaggle of cars coming out of Druids. Now down to Lodge Corner with Spencer Baker having a go on the inside. There's plenty of room. He leaves his braking very late indeed. They're side by side and Spencer Baker goes through into the lead or does he? Well, Lawrence Plummer hasn't given up yet. He's got the inside line for dear leap. Virtually the mirrors touching as they come now over the line. 
Spencer Baker has the inside line. Lawrence Plummer has the outside. And Carl Blakely's there as well. The yellow car of Blakely tucked right up behind Baker. And Baker goes through into the lead. Blakely trying to go through up into second place. And he does so. There's a bit of contact there between Blakely and Plummer. But well, into the lead goes Spencer Baker. And poor old Lawrence Plummer really lost out there, Neville. He did. The squeezing's still going on. Troy Dunlop on the grass. Troy Dunlop's got no addition at all. He's off down the original circuit of Oakland Park. Well, that's a shortcut that certainly won't work. I think Lawrence Plummer has got a problem. I'm quite convinced you can see him slowing there, and he's being passed, and he's dropping back, and I would suspect that he's got a mechanical problem of some sort. He's down in fifth place. There's Troy Dunlop continuing. Well, he managed to avoid getting anything solid, so full marks for that. But Dunlop is now right down the field. Well, this battle up at the front, we've got Plummer now trying to come back. Now, I really don't quite understand why he slowed so much because it looked as if he got a mechanical problem. I suspect he might not have got a gear. That's probably it, I would guess. However, either way, he's lost the place. Let's look at that bit of running cross again. Dunlop on the grass. He's got the brakes on now. You can see it's all locked up. Now he's beginning to take them off and realise that the sensible thing to do is to steer it down the old circuit. That's what he did. And Dunlop on the grass through no fault of his own. He wasn't given a great deal of room there by the yellow rover, that of Carl Blakely. And the Telford driver, Troy Dunlop, skates off across the grass. Spencer Baker leads. Carl Blakely is now second. Third is Jonathan Williams there, the Beaconsfield man with the blue Rover 216. Lawrence Plummer down to fourth. Then it's Brady and Mark Humphrey completing the top six. And Spencer Baker has got quite a bit of daylight between himself and his chasing pursuers. So maybe he's going to be able to escape now as his battle rages on for second place. Russell Brady holding on to fourth place. Not as impressive as he's been in the past. Phil Sharp going off there. The New Zealand driver who lives in Surrey, I wonder where he's going. Well, it isn't a shortcut that's going to work, not like that one we saw before. The race leaders coming out of Shell, now Lawrence Plummer trying to fight back up into third place. He's on the inside line, the people it says on the back of Plummer's car. He's trying to go around the outside of Williams, coming into Falsons and he does it! A tremendous bit of driving that. Lawrence Plummer is now third, Jonathan Williams is fourth. We are fifth with Russell Grady, and they're coming now out of Druid, down to Lodge Corner. And Carl Blakely, I think, is now closing up onto the rear of Spencer Baker. The two of them nose to tail as they come into Lodge Corner. Then it's Plummer, then Jonathan Williams, then Grady, and the pale blue car of Maidenhead's Mark Humphrey. Grady in fifth place, Humphrey right behind him, but the battle for the lead is the one that has to be watched now, because that was shaping up really well as they went past us. And we see now what happened to Phil Sharp. And just look at this car leaps into the air. All four wheels off the ground. Can't have done the suspension. That's good at all. And it's still bouncing now. On board with Russell Grady. Looking for a way past Jonathan Williams on the inside at Shell. There's not much room. Russell Grady trying to go through on the inside. I think he's done it. He has. That puts Grady up into fourth place. His next target being Lawrence Plummer. He was fourth once before and he got back as he comes into full speed here. So he's having a really adventurous race here over the curbs. And I'm quite sure that though we can't see it right behind him as the opposition as the leaders come up on the final lap. And it's all going to happen, I think, at the last corner if it's going to happen at all. Round the outside, it'll never work. So Spencer Baker is going to head Blakely to the flag. No question about that. Because he really did choose the wrong way to do it. He should have been on the inside if he was going to try anything at all. Out comes the flag and Baker wins. His second victory of the season with Carl Blakely taking second place and Lawrence Plummer coming across the line third. Troy Dunlop, after his big drama earlier on, took fastest lap and finished 11th. And there you can see the top six, Baker, Blakely and Plummer, Grady, Williams and Humphrey. Grady still has his ease the championship from Plummer and Humphrey. Briggs falls back. Spencer, second win of the season. Congratulations. Cheers, thanks. This was the one what I really wanted to win. This is one where I cut my teeth in racing. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Chuffed a bit. <laughs> Not easy either. No, it wasn't. Carl, Carl was absolutely on the tail all the race. Absolutely fantastic. He, uh, yeah, he gave me all the room I needed. Nice, clean race. Excellent, it wasn't. Really Congratulations. Good. We'll see you again, I'm sure. Right. Thank you very yeah, much thanks. indeed. Second win of the season then for Spencer Baker. Now let's take time out to uh, bring you the latest in the world of motorsport news. For round seven of the World Rally Championship, the series travelled to New Zealand. And the flying Finn Hewer Kankinen took the initiative with a six second lead after four stages. But last year's winner Colin McRae blasted past Kankinen to lead the rally all the way to the finish. Subaru teammate and championship leader Carlos Sainz 
suffered engine failure on stage four. While Ford had drafted in Ari Vatanen for the rally, he did a fine job holding down fourth until going off the road five stages from home. Toyota's Didier Oriol lost time going off the road and with differential problems, but held on to finish fifth. Germany's Armin Schwartz took a fine third place from Mitsubishi, ahead of teammate Ericsson in fourth. But Scotland's Colin McRae celebrated a second win on the Rally of New Zealand, with Oriol now taking the lead of the series by just three points from Sainz. In the European Rallycross Championship, the finish round saw plenty of action. Britain's Will Gollop was chasing Martin Schenker, but ran wide, coming back across the road and clipping Kenneth Hansen on his way into the barrier. Hansen carried on in second place, whilst the marshals extinguished the flames on Gollop's battered Peugeot. The Norwegian driver Schenker held on to win in his RS2000, with Hansen Citroën and Per Ekman Subaru coming home in third place. Finally to crash of the week on the National Saloon Car Cup, Mike Jordan, the culprit with his BMW M3. We know from your letters that you enjoy our crash of the week, but let me reassure you, no lasting harm done. Well, time for us to take a break, but after that, we'll be back here at Alton Park with the VWs and the Porsches. Stay tuned. Alton Park, where, as I'm sure you can tell, the weather has changed, the sun has gone in, we've had a big shower, but the track is drying out in time for the production Porsche race. Car's ready behind me on the grid, so let's now join our race commentators. Stephen Ratcliffe in pole position with Des Winks next to him. The 968's going well, but don't forget that Des Winks had his hand smacked for an incident at Brands Hatch, which also involved John Barker as well. They're not in close proximity to each other here. Brian Robinson well up. He's been driving Porsche since God was a boy, I think. Davis then sixth, John Barker seventh, Graham Langford, and right at the back there, in tenth place, Chris Trakosh. A long way back for him. He is going to be a man to watch. The lights go green and away they go. Ten laps of Alton Park. We're on board with Rob Babakan. He started 11th on the grid. It's like a video game ahead of him. Cars all over the track. It's very crowded indeed. Heading down towards Old Hall Corner. Graham Langford just ahead of him. The white car of Hans Eric Anderson to his right. And Anderson there weaving all over the road coming out of Old Hall. Yes, that was a real fairy tale there. He just sort of corrected it more by luck than by judgment. But look at this. We've got quite a battle at the front there. No question about it. This has the makings of a very good race. Number 33, Phil Hindley goes through with the 944 Turbo, but it's Stephen Radcliffe, the ex-modified sports car racer of years ago, in the lead with the white 968. This is the original racing 968 that was developed three or four seasons ago. Des Winks in second place, a man who 10 years ago was here at Alton Park for rally crossing in Porsches, deliberately, not by accident, and he's in second place at the moment. Third is Chris Healy with the classic Carrera shape, and fourth is Brian Robinson. Yes, Robinson back in fourth place there. Could be a man to watch on this circuit, which is not yet completely dried out. Strakosh still got a long way to go. I don't think he'll be a very happy man today. And surprisingly enough, there's another man a lot further back than I would normally expect it to be, and that's John Fletcher. Radcliffe, Winks, Hiddy, Robinson, Lanford and Babakin. That's the top six. Andrew Davies, I think, dive down the inside of Anderson there. As Anderson's got it in hand, cuts him off without a shilling, as it were. Everybody else filing through behind, but it's still tight at the front. Absolutely. It's Stephen Radcliffe in the lead, the Yorkshireman heading then down into Lodge Corner. In second place is the Scarborough motor dealer, Des Winks. Third, and a very sideways third, Chris Healy. Brian Robinson fourth. The rest of the field all pouring through, and we're on board now with Rob Babakin, an ex-single-seater champion many, many years ago before switching to Porsches. He comes up dearly across the line. There in the lead is Stephen Radcliffe. It's a 96812 at the moment as the field all pour through Old Hall Corner. Graham Langford through there with the S Sport. And off in a big way, that's Radcliffe. That's the leader to the right of the picture there. Stephen Radcliffe's 968 off up against the barriers. That is a very badly damaged car. The door opens. Stephen Radcliffe hopefully is okay. He makes himself free of the car, but Des Winks now leads and a big accident for Radcliffe. He certainly departed very quickly indeed. Winks has now three or four cars lengths. It's interesting, David, to see that the 968 now copes very easily with the 911s in this particular category. Yes, when the 968 first came along in 1991, it really did take Mark Hales, who was then driving it a long time to develop the car, but now they're right there on the pace and leading here at Alton Park. There's Paul Goldstein. He had a big accident at Brands Hatch with the 944 Turbo. It's been rebuilt, but it's a long way down the field. Paul normally higher up than that. Yes, it's usually a question of sorting the car out. When it comes to sorting out, well, we can see here there's a lot to be done because that car is very badly damaged mechanically as well as bodily. 
The race leader, though, Des Winks, coming down into the Lodge corner. Second and third, Chris Healy and Brian Robinson coming through. In fourth place, Graham Langford. Then it's the orange car and Bob Babakin. The rest of this field all jockeying for position, but nobody really making a move there as they come into Lodge Corner and a 10 second penalty for number 21 that's Brian Robinson Brian Robinson who's third on the road has jumped to the start he's been docked 10 seconds so he may be third on the road but where he will finish on corrected times is anybody's guess well you've got to go add 10 seconds to his time and at this stage of the race it's difficult to predict what that might mean this is Paul Goldstein and he's pretty fed up I think it's called a retirement I think that says it all as he comes and has a look under the bonnet and it's no comfort whatsoever and the team looks pretty sick about it too number 10 bob babakin heading graham langford as they come into old hall there's the journalist john barker with his 968 well that one isn't damaged it makes it something of a rarity at the moment with dramas for stephen radcliffe down into cascades they go there's babakin number 10 after starting 11th on the grid he's well up in the top six now good drive hans eric anderson there going through chasing graham langford and john barker right up behind the pair of them Yes, Barker anxious to make some places here as we watch. The leader still getting on with the job very nicely, thank you. And Deswinks has a very respectable lead now. Can pick his lines, doesn't need to hustle around too much. The light playing tricks with the drivers here as they go into what is a dark, miserable day on occasions. The race leader, Deswinks, coming down into Lodge Corner. Nobody around him on the track, which makes Wink's life even more difficult. He's trying to concentrate all the time. He's never won a race before. He's out on his own, trying to maintain concentration all the time. John Barker on the back of that little group of cars, coming down under the vehicle bridge, down to Lodge Corner. Barker in the yellow 968, closing up all the time. He's going through on the inside. He's not breaking. He's going off. Off in a big way goes Barker. Bang, into the armco. Oh, look at that. He's brought the barriers down. He's gone straight through the armco and into the spectator fencing. And that is going to undoubtedly cause a lot of problems and modification, I think, to the circuit. Well, he's OK. That's the good news. But it's very worrying that the Armco should fall apart like that. Des Winks in the lead. Well, a 968 leads, but it's not been a good day for them. Two of them destroyed and there's somebody else in trouble. Phil Hindley there, who was leading Class B, get hunted off by David Jones and zonked into the barriers. He goes. So Nicker Brook claims another victim as the flag goes out for Des Winks then to take a very easy victory there. A comfortable one indeed for him. Behind him in second place, Chris Healy, then Robert Babakin, they're all in Class A, Strakosh also in Class A, and Anderson, and then the Class B winner in 11th place, Tom Seagrove. In the championship, Stephen Radcliffe heads Class A from the Holiday and Hugh Price, John Barker third, while John Robinson leads Class B. Straightforward win for you? Cracking, in fact, to be honest, it's one of the longest races I've had for a long, long time because I was just counting the laps away with no sort of excitement with other drivers to race against. It was just to watch the mirror for the first two laps and then put my head down. Plain sailing, just like the motorway. Congratulations. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very All much. Right. Well done. Congratulations then to, uh, to Des Winks. Great race. A uh, bit of a procession at the end, but uh, a very good win for him. Well, time now to move on, get the next race in. It is the turn of the VW Vento VR6 Challenge and the Polo G40 Cup. <laughs> Delayed start, shortened race, due, I'm afraid, to that incident with the Porsches and the yellow flag now out at Lodge all the time. And we're looking at perhaps one of the surprises of the series, Ian Briggs. But Mark Lemmer, quickest, Briggs second to him. Guy Povey, Ray Arms and Magnus Led. that's the top five. Stephen Day is sixth, while William Moore and Michael Day had the Polo G40 Cup, scrapped seventh and ninth. Two separate grids, a six-lap race, the Ventos will go first. Ten seconds later, it's time for the Polos. Lemmer leads off the line. A long time, 10 seconds, and Lemmer holding on to his advantage as they come up to Old Hall. He's got the line there. Briggs behind him. Briggs looking threatening, but not threatening enough as they go down the avenue. The polo start. William Moore jumps into the lead. We're on board with Michael Day. Lots of arm twirling there. I think he got a knock from Philip Burgess playing his point scoring joker card here at Appleton. Burgess going through into second place. Michael Day down to third. The supercharged polo set off to Cascades as the 2.8 litre V6 Ventos are at Shell. Lama leading Briggs. Lemma, the travel agent, out there in front and travelling well, I must say. The family, in fact, he interested in motor racing right the way back to the early days after the war when his grandfather used to go off with Reg Farnell and company and Roy Salvadori to the races in the 40s. 
We're on board with Dave Pinkney, a man most regularly seen in the British Touring Car Championship. He's up behind Ray Arms, who's also an ex-British Touring Car Championship driver. The leaders, though, coming down into Nickerbrook. It's Mark Lemmer in the lead. In second place, Ian Briggs. And third and fourth, a nose to tail, the white car of Birmingham motor trader Guy Povey and Stephen Day, the reigning polo champion, right up behind him. In fifth is the immaculate car of Ray Arms. Then Dave Pinkney, sixth, and Magnus Laird there in seventh place. And Lemma with a little gap opening up between the front two and everybody else. Briggs closing the gap a little. No question about it, Pinkney very, very determined to move up a place as well and looking to see if he can do that now. Here are the leaders, into Lodge. They don't forget the yellow flag here so they can't overtake, they've got to behave themselves, robbing, I suppose, the outbreaking manoeuvre that they all look for in that particular place. Up comes Woody Moore, the head of the little cars, ex-jockey, Burgess in second place, playing the joker, double points, right behind him, Day. Up dearly. Now, Michael Day down in third place. That's not like Michael. He's been doing much of the winning in the Polo Cup this season. But William Moore escaping, and Michael Day being delayed, trying to get past Philip Burgess. He tries the inside line as they come in towards Old Hall Corner. Philip Burgess down to third, Michael Day up to second. Now, let's see whether he can catch him past William Moore. Somebody runs very wide there. They're collecting back together. We're with Dave Pinkney now. Lots of experience, including, of course, the British Touring Car Championship behind him. Pinkney there chasing the other day and trying to get through. But we're coming up to Lodge again, and he'll have to stay put, I fear. All over the back of Stephen Day. Day in turn right up behind Guy Povey, and this a terrific battle. Povey, Day, and Pinkney. Nose to tail as they come up to Elite. The Vento series in its first year, providing us with plenty of action. V6 engine a lot of torque and it really is a beautiful engine as we look at this battle that's going on with Lemma I reckon under pressure now from the flying news agent Briggs Ian Briggs has driven single seaters he's driven minis you name it he's driven it he's got tremendous experience and he's putting it all to the test here a look at the polos Nick Bourne's blue car going through fourth and that's Andy Kramer charging up the inside there of Ian Churchill they managed to avoid making contact with one another Kramer working his way up through the order. There's Michael Day, second in the polo section at the moment, but William Moore leading, and with a sort of advantage that makes one think that he's not going to be caught without a great deal of effort. Drama's going on there. Round gets number 44, Steve Mills, and off in the background goes Mark Grady. Yes, I think he selected second when he wanted to actually select something else there. We've got a final lap though now, however, and Lemmer is being pressured. Little tap on the bumper. I saw something go flying off the front of somebody's car. I think it was Briggs there, lost a piece of trim. And out goes the flag, Lemmer wins, Briggs second. That was quite a race, a really good battle, and what a shame it was short. Mark Lemmer takes another victory. Toby, Day and Pinkney, the next three up. So Lemmer wins from Briggs, Toby third, Day, Pinkney and Arms, that's the top six in the Ventos. And this is Willie Moore to win the Polo G40 Cup for the second time this year. Lemma heads the Vento Championship, Day the Polos. Mark, congratulations from pole to checkered flag, looked easy. Oh, I can assure you it wasn't, it was quite a long six lapper. Um, yeah, got a good, good first couple of laps in, but Ian was very quick at certain parts of the circuit. So I decided that as it was only six laps, let's go defensive. Um, defended everywhere for the last couple of laps, and, but we didn't have to at Lodge because of the yellow flag. So it's made life a little bit easier, but... It was still quite tough for a little six-lapper, really. You did well. I congratulate you. Well done. Thanks. We'll see you again. Mark Lemmer, there we are. Four wins out of seven this season now. Congratulations to him. And with that, it's time for us to say goodbye. Time to close this edition of the Best of British Motorsport. I hope you enjoyed the action. Look forward to seeing you again soon. From the team at Alton Park, goodbye and drive safely.